He served as legal counsel for the Bush-Cheney campaign during the presidential recount in Florida 20 years ago. So he knows a little bit about the process that's unfolding following this past election. Alex Vogel, thank you so much for joining us. So, so just here's, I had Rudy Giuliani on just before you, and he went through some of the things, the sworn affidavits, petitioning of state legislatures in two states, he say, we'll, we'll expand to maybe even eight states. What do you think, you've been there, you've done that, you've been through the process, what do you think the odds are of getting these recounts? And then again, let's take it one step further, and the odds are of actually changing uh, the electoral votes for w one of the candidates. Well, first, thanks for having me on. It makes me feel old to realize that uh, Florida was 20 years ago. Um, uh, I'm sorry to, to hear that we're, we're back in a conversation about uh, recounts, but that's what happens with close elections. Um, here's how I think about this. Um, there are obviously some states uh, with mandatory recounts. Those will go forward. They should go forward. There are some states that are probably within the discretionary margin, and I would encourage the president and his team, if they think there's a, a, a reasonable chance there, to pursue those as well. So, um, so Alex, I, 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 I don't mean to cut you off, but here's the, yeah. here's the issue. I, I, we understand all the within the 1% or half of 1% margins that there'll be automatic recounts. We're talking about the ones that are outside of that extra uh, uh, area where it wouldn't automatically go to a recount. They're trying, the Trump administration, Rudy Giuliani, are trying to get a, uh, a state legislature to decide that to recount. What are the odds of that happening? I think they're very low. Uh, historically, that doesn't happen. Uh, states have pre-existing recount procedures uh, that are usually followed. Very unlikely that the state legislatures uh, or, or others are going to step in uh, and set up new recount standards now. The larger issue is at margins of 10, 20, 40,000 votes, while these states were incredibly close, they're all outside of what I and uh, every- Even uh, with even with some of the irregularities that, that are popping up with a bunch of ballots being all you know filled out for one candidate, even with some of those things that they're alleging on, on the right, on, on the Trump campaign? Those aren't really pursued effectively through a recount. Um, the campaign can absolutely go to court and say, hey, there's a problem with the voter rolls, a bunch of dead people voted, uh, the, there's problems with timing in terms of when the ballots were counted. All of those arguments have, if they have the evidence to support them, are potentially impactful. The question is whether they, uh, A, whether they, they prevail factually, and then B, whether that represents a large enough universe uh, to change any of the outcomes here. Well, let me ask you that. A large enough universe, so, it, so they'll take it on a per ballot, ballot by ballot case, rather than if they see a lot of irregularities in a state, demand a recount through the courts. And you're saying rather than that, they'll, they'll go kind of what they were doing with you for a long time in 2000, looking at each ballot, remember hanging chads and, and whatnot. I, I do, uh, even if the campaign comes forward and shows that, you know, I'm just uh, using this as an example, says, hey, look, 2000 people in a state of 4 million voters uh, appear to have been deceased. That's not likely from a remedy perspective uh, to have a court issue an entirely new election or recount. It could certainly uh, knock out those votes. And then the question is from a prosecutorial perspective, who did that and, and how do we punish them? But again, that won't change the outcome of any of those elections given where the numbers are. In and, and Florida, just correct me, I, I remember going through, I just don't remember that Florida was, was a recount generated because it was it, the original, it fell within that limit of 1% or half of 1%, whatever Florida was it, at the time? It, it did, and we were talking 500 some votes. And at the end, the, the legal decision that everyone focuses on wasn't deciding the election. It was simply telling uh, the state that they could not do what the Gore team asked for, which was a selective uh, count only in places that they believe favored them politically. Uh, you can't do a selective recount, it's ballot harvesting. Um, and so that was, it was a very narrow issue. I think people forget that. Uh, it's not like a court stepped in and said, we don't like the way the ballots looked and yeah. it was very close, so we're gonna have a whole new election. Alex, I have only about a half a minute or so. Let's remind our audience, if people are saying on the left, saying President Trump should have conceded by now, but Al Gore in 2000 took 37 days before he made his concession speech, right? He did, and, and the American people understood and respected the important issues at stake here. Uh, and we should absolutely be patient during this recount process. Uh, and then we'll see what uh, what happens with the court decision. Final question. Any any state's going to flip, in your opinion? Just, just take a shot, take an opinion if you want. Any state's going to flip this time around? 
it is certainly possible that any one of these states that's down below 10,000 votes, you could see a change. Again, hard to see that flipping the outcome even in one of those states, but certainly within the realm of the possible. Alex Vogel, thank you for your time. Thank you.